It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoor Southwest. Wow, what a great look out there with the Gulf of Mexico, crystal clear waters, beautiful white sand beaches, pool, kids playing. What a great scene. Hi everybody, welcome in to Orange Beach, Alabama. This is just down the street from Gulf Shores, Alabama, one of the great vacation and resort meccas in the entire south and southwest regions of our country. We have come here for one reason, and it's not the vacation stuff, it's the fishing. Right behind us is Mobile Bay, Alabama. And what a lot of people don't realize is it is one of the great destinations for lots of different species of fish. But what we're here specifically to do this week is to search for my very first ever triple tail. Now, if you don't know what a triple tail is, which I really didn't before this trip, it is a very strange fish. They migrate along these bays just off the Gulf of Mexico in the hot summertime months. They hang out along poles and pieces of debris. They float right near the surface. It can be very difficult to make one bite and even harder to catch one, but it can be some of the most exciting fishing you'll ever do. And we're gonna do something a little different this week. We're doing things in reverse. This is a flashback. We've actually already been out fishing. We were on the water this morning, right at sunup with Captain Patrick Garmison, who runs Ugly Fishing Charter Service right here in Mobile Bay, and we've already caught our fish. And I can tell you, we've got some of the most spectacular footage of this triple tail fishing that uh, you could possibly imagine. You will not want to miss this a little bit later on in the show. We're going to fish for some flounder and speckled trout first, and then get to some sight fishing for triple tail a little bit later. While we're out doing that, we're taking you around our region for your very latest fishing reports from our team of insider reporters on your local lakes, rivers, and bays. Now we're located at the beautiful Perdido Beach Resort. Great accommodations, great dining. What a great spot and we'll give you all the information if you'd like to book a trip right here to the place we're staying. We'll put it up at the end of the show. Right now, we get you back to the FSN studios for your weekend planner. When we come back, we transition you back to early this morning, trying to do a little speckle trout and flounder fishing. The salooner tables are pointing to Sunday as the best choice for fishing this weekend. The peak times will take place a little bit before sunrise and again at 4.58 in the afternoon. The sun will rise at 6.33 and set at 8.15. And evenings will be lit by a moon that is 69% visible. Stay with us, we have all of your fishing updates from around the region on the way. Plus, I'll return with Wally Marshall to answer this week's Ask the Pro question about crappie fishing. First though, here are some of the entries from our Costa Catch of the Week contest. These pictures did not win, but we thought you might enjoy looking at some of the nice catches. We'll have this week's winner at the end of the show. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat, it's a tracker. By Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. By Mercury Marine, official outboard of Fox Sports Outdoors. And by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. something shaking its head kind of funny flounder good oh there decent, it is decent flounder look at this all right all right hey welcome back everybody fox sports outdoors today there's a flounder for you right there we got a little something working we're with uh captain patrick garmison and we are out on mobile bay today and there's a good start beautiful flounder this is just something to get us going. We're kind of in the warm-up phase right now. We're uh, gonna do something a lot more difficult in a little bit. I'll tell you what that is, but we're, gonna, we're releasing fish today and it does my heart bad to release this fish. What are we fishing and, and what is this area right here? It's got kind of an interesting history. The name of the, the area is called Katrina Cut. Uh, this is an extension of Dolphin Island that was breached during 
actually Hurricane Ivan made a small cut, Katrina blew it into a bigger cut. And uh, during the oil spill, they were allowed to come back and put rocks here. And they installed all these rocks and now it's just a fish haven. We're gonna do something, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're gonna go out here in just a little bit and start zigzagging our way around and try to find a triple tail. I've never caught a triple tail, as I mentioned at the beginning. We're gonna give that a shot, but we thought we'd just try to get a little action working here first. So we'll do this for a little while. We might catch one more, but uh, coming up here in a little bit, you don't want to miss this because uh, if we can find one of these triple tail, it is some of the most exciting fishing you've ever, ever seen. And it just makes my heart throb just thinking about it. Right now though, we're going to get things started though with some fishing and lake reports for you. Let's catch up with Brian Hughes over in Texas. Hi folks, this week's Lone Star Lakes is coming to you from legendary Lake Fork, home of next week's 11th annual Legend of Lake Fork Big Bass Tournament. They want you to remember, all boats are welcome. Now they're gonna be paying eight places each hour each day and they have five legend boats up for grabs. So come on out, catch a big fish and win your prize. Now when you get here to Lake Fork to fish the tournament, you're gonna to find bass still in at least two of the three stages of spawning. They're gonna be in a post spawn and spawning stages, even though it's mid-May. You'll wanna look up shallow for the spawning fish. I like to stay with the boat in about eight feet and fish from one to six feet with a mini Carolina rig. That's a quarter inch weight, about an 18 inch liter, one or two odd hook, and a creature bait on the other end. Watermelon red with a dip of chartreuse is my color choice. You use what you think will work best. The post spawn fish will be just out there in the main lake off the points and humps, suspended, regathering their energy and feeding on shad type lures. That means blade baits, deep diving crankbaits, and other things like an A-rig where you can get down to 15, 20 foot of water. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by the 11th annual Legend of Lake Fort Big Bass Tournament, paying eight places each hour and five legend boats up for grabs. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, this week's report is brought to you by Port Aransas on Mustang Island, the fishing capital of Texas, where anglers enjoy pristine bays, estuaries, 18 miles of surf, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus the local restaurants will even cook your catch come sundown. Come fish and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit portaransas.org. Well, if weather forecasters are on target, May could be an awesome month of fishing. Weather is supposed to be near average or a degree or two below average. Winds will start to diminish and be less of a factor. Tides are also moderating, plus speckled trout are putting on weight as eggs mature as the spawn nears. Now, where to fish will be dictated by the tides and wind direction. On the upper coast, Sabine and Galveston Bays will continue to see good action on the lower ends of those estuaries. Also look for trout to start to make a forage change from shrimp to finfish. Small to medium sized topwater lures are good options. From Matagorda southward to Port O'Connor, it's an inside or outside option. On light wind days, try heading to the surf. Now I know it's early, but fish are already stacking up with some good catches reported. Inside, concentrate on sand grass areas where fish will gather in advance of their spawn. From Cedar Bio to the Corpus Christi Ship Channel, anglers will play tides fishing the back lakes and shorelines of St. Joe Island. Spoil Islands either side of the Corpus Christi Ship Channel are also good bets. Estes and Packery Flats are good options for redfish on windy days. The entire length of the land cut continues to give up solid fish. Out of Port Isabel, fish the grass flats targeting sandy potholes on windy days. Also take advantage of the color change around the convention center and look for big fish from Mexiquita Flats to Longbar. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a single tide schedule of one high and one low tide each day. I'm Bill Olson and I'll see you on the coast. Hey Barry, Barry, I just got one back here on this pogey. Did? Yeah, it's a good trout. Come right up behind the boat and ate it. Get your head up, baby. Yeah, I'm just trying to be easy. Don't pull the hook. There we go. 
Got him. All right. Yes, sir. Look at this. There's your big trout right there. That is what you fish for in a tournament, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Captain Patrick Garmison's with us today, doing some trout fish, actually doing just fishing. We're, yeah. uh, we've already set it up. We caught that flounder earlier, right off this rock levee that runs down here, and you were fishing live bait. Talk about the bait you were fishing. Yeah, we're fishing uh, live pogies or menhaden, um, but just, just free lining and uh, throwing the bait um, back here along the side of the boat. The bait gets to fr swim freely. And uh, this fish actually bit it right behind the boat. So it actually chased it right up to the boat and, and uh, that's where he got it. That's so. amazing. We're, we're letting yeah. our fish go today. We're not keeping any fish. So we're gonna gently ease that fish back. Let him get his breath a little. And he's wanting to go. We actually caught several trout today on shrimp, but they were, they were smaller trout. And then he put that big bait on and we'll show you a quick shot of what, what one of them looks like. Here's a big pogey. Quick shot, but uh, you don't want to miss what comes next because uh, we're going to spend the rest of the day looking for a triple tail. Stay with us right now, though. We've got more fishing reports coming your way. Hey, ever since I met Scott and Lena Porter from Shamrock, Texas through a Sooner Beat contest about four years ago, I've been wanting to get over here and meet them at their favorite Oklahoma Lake, Fort Cobb. I finally did that. I jumped in the boat with Scott this week. I see why he likes it so much. Here's what he says about it. Lena and I found Fort Cobb about 20 years ago. We've made many new friends here over the years. We've been here hundreds of times. It's a beautiful lake, beautiful park. Uh, we've caught many different species of fish, catfish generally. Uh, if you want a great place to bring your family, Fort Cobb's a place to come. And I found out Scott's exactly right. A great multi-species lake. We caught some really nice crappie, some big old white bass. We had some walleye and sawgye, channel cat, and had a nice largemouth bass on. Now, I would like to say that we were targeting each of those species differently. No, we caught them all the same way. Mid-lake, throwing the same thing, baby shad swimmers and also rally grubs on a 1 8 or 1 16 ounce moglo jig head, casting about two foot of water, keeping the boat in four, slow retrieve. They were hammering it, had a great outing. Now, the lake has benefited from some recent rain, starting to come up some. The mid-lake area is where we fished. It was best. The uh, Sunset Cove area is the boat ramp we used, a nice marina there, a good fishing dock there. You can also access the shoreline many places throughout that state park here on Fort Cobb Lake. You need to check it out, but one thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Buy, lose, setting a new standard of fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. And by Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. Look at it over there, Barry. What? That's a log. You yeah, a float, big floating log right there. Is that what they get on? Oh, man. Look at there. There's a fish on it. What is it? It's a triple tail. Is it? Look at him. Look at him. He's oh right there gosh. on just okay. down current of it. Okay, welcome back everybody. Fox Sports Outdoors. We're on Mobile Bay with Captain Patrick Garmison. We've switched over now to triple tail fishing. We're trying to sight fish a triple tail. We see a log and he sees a triple tail on it. I'm going to grab a rod right here. Okay, I've got a, a popping cork and a live shrimp right there with a little treble hook. I'm going to try to throw it up current. We've got an outgoing tide. Got it, got it. Right up current. And now I'm going to let that current just drift it right by that log, and we hope that triple tail comes off that log and sees that shrimp. Come on, baby. He turned on it. He turned on the cork. He just ate it. He's, he's on it. Is, did he get it? Got him. We got a triple tail. All right, Barry. I'm going to try to get, try to push him between. Yeah, we just need him away from this log. Here he comes up right there. Let's net him. Let's net him. Oh, this is dangerous right here. Now he's going away from the log, which is a good thing. Come up and roll over, baby. We got him. Woo! Yay! Woo! <laughs> yes, sir! <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a giant triple tail. Oh, my heart's pounding. What a fight that fish put up. 
Oh yeah, that thing is bottomed. To, it's okay. a 15 pound boga and it's bottomed out. Look at this big daddy. There is a big triple tail. Oh my gosh. My that first is. triple tail ever, folks. And you saw it live right there. We got a shrimp, got a, a cork, got the right cast, let the current drift it around the log. He came off the log, ate the shrimp, pulled the cork down, and then the fight was on. My lose inshore saltwater reel did a great job there because I loosened the drag on it several times. Every time he would make a run, I loosened the drag, let him run. And then every time he would turn towards me, I, I tightened that drag back down. And uh, does this thing have a weight it's, on it? It's bottomed out. It, bottomed out. Yeah, it, that's 15. a 15 pound bow and it's bottomed out. So this, this fish weighs more than 15 pounds. We don't know how much it weighs, but it's more than 15. All right, back this fish goes. She's still plenty, plenty lively. Thank you, we appreciate the business. And you're gonna, you're gonna revive her a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was gonna grab it tail. Okay, she's loose. See you, buddy, appreciate it. Right now, you get more fishing reports. Here's Louisiana with Cajun Phil and Kevin. It's almost been stupid since we see this much sunshine. We're about to go crazy down here in Hackberry, Louisiana. Matter of fact, I'm sitting here at the lodge right now, waiting on Captain Kevin and the other guys to get in, see what they've done. Talked to them this morning. They had pretty good mixed catches. Some of them caught trout, some of them caught redfish. Some of them caught big redfish because they went down to the jetties. As far as the rest of the thing goes, listen, Captain Kevin just got back from down around Lafitte, Louisiana, where he fished the HT Elite Redfish Cup Tournament. He said some of the guys down around Homa, Louisiana, they've been limiting out with trout each and every day. They don't have the high muddy water that we've been fighting over here on the western part of the state, but I tell you what, ours is picking up each and every week. I tell you what, let's talk a little bit about bass fishing. You know, right now there's so much muddy water. Everything's high, everything's muddy. But if you found some impoundments like Lacassine Reserve, south of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Friends, Lacassine Reserve, you gotta go in there with an aluminum boat. Biggest motors are 25. A lot of people are in there with kayaks. Keep in mind, heavy vegetation, that's why the water's clear. Heavy vegetation, lots of lily pads. What we call dollar lilies, the little small lily pads. They also got the big lily pads, lots of vegetation. You need something weedless like a rivet frog's been doing real good. Don't worry about color. You're throwing over all this vegetation, them bass can't even see that color. You pull it across the top, they're gonna blow it up. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. By Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Introducing the XI-5 for ultimate boat control. By Fort Worth Nissan. Fox Sports Outdoors is powered by Fort Worth Nissan. And by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Welcome back everyone. It's time now for the Ask the Pro question. Your chance for advice from professional anglers. This week, Gene wants to know, where would you look for crappie in a lake with very little brush or structure? For the answer, we checked with Mr. Crappie, Wally Marshall. Hey, that's a perfect question right there because I've fished a lot of lakes like down in Florida that's just a sugar bowl and they don't have a lot of structure in it. Submerged grass, submerged brush piles maybe, you know, but you've got to look for shade because crappie like to get in back in deep corners. So I would key on boat docks or I would key on pontoon boats that's on that lake, especially the one that's got a bunch of cobwebs on them because they've been sitting there for a long time and shoot that jig up under them pontoon boats and you can catch a lot of fish. Thank you, Wally. If you have a question to ask one of the pros, go to our website, follow the Ask the Pro link and send us your information. Now let's find out which big fish picture wins someone a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. We're back at the Perdido Beach Resort at Orange Beach, Alabama after a great day's fishing at Mobile Bay. Going to give you all the contact information in just a moment if you'd like to book your own trip here. Right now though, it's time for our Costa Catch winner this week. Every week, someone wins a free pair of Costa sunglasses here on the show. This week's winner is Ryan Loveless of Austin, Texas, showing off a giant 12-pound largemouth bass he caught at Bastrop Lake east of Austin, Texas. If you would like to enter our contest, all you have to do is go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. On the right-hand side of the front page, click on the Costa Catch of the Week box, 
follow the instructions to send us your big fish photo and you could win your very own free pair of Costas. You can see all of their frame and lens styles at their website. Just go back to the front page of our website, foxsportsoutdoors.com, click on the Costa logo and you can see everything there, including the frame styles that we were wearing on this week's episode called Tag. Next up, it's time for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, the right gear if you'd like to come fishing here at Mobile Bay. And the main thing I want to show you is the rig for triple tail. We used a little popping cork, but not in the traditional sense. It was a popping cork with a little short leader, only about 18 inches long. Below that, a small hook, and I can't believe the small treble hook that Captain Garmison uses to catch these giant triple tail. I caught that 20, nearly 20 pound triple tail on a little treble hook like you see there and no weight below it. You want to keep it right up at the surface. Last year I went off on a rant on Stuff That Matters about the evils of the payday and title loan industry. I'm not a fan of these companies because they trap people at the moment of their weakest need. They charge them exorbitant interest rates, they roll those loans over and over again back into a new one and they trap people in a lifetime of misery and debt. Many state governments have not had the stomach to do much about these industries, but many cities and municipalities have. There are two things you can do. One, never ever do business with a payday or title loan company unless you plan to immediately pay that loan back and unless you're fully aware of what interest rates those companies are charging you and you're willing to pay it. And secondly, talk to your city government about passing some laws to restrict these companies in your city. I hope you enjoyed our trip to Orange Beach, Alabama and Mobile Bay. If you'd like to book a trip here, we stayed at the Perdido Beach Resort. It's a beautiful place, great dining, great pools, great entertainment, beautiful white sand beaches, just steps outside the back door, crystal blue waters. We thoroughly enjoyed our trip here and you can book a trip here at the information and the contacts you see there on your screen. Also, if you'd like to book a charter trip out on Mobile Bay and catch some speckled trout, redfish, or even a triple tail like we caught on today's show, you can contact Captain Patrick Garmison at the information you see on your screen. He would be happy to take you, your family, or your group out for a charter trip. Really think you would enjoy a trip here to beautiful Gulf Shores, Alabama, Mobile Bay, and the Perdido Beach Resort. Don't forget to join us for next week's episode. We'll be on Thursday at 10.30 p.m the repeat airing Saturday morning at 7.30. And if you miss any of our episodes, you can always catch the latest episode 24-7 at the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. And something new, right below that, you'll see the archived past episodes of our show, plus lots of other product how-to videos that could be very helpful for you. Just click on that link right below our latest videos and go to our video pages. We also have our Twitter feed up with lots of news, photos, video, and we have our Facebook page up. You can check us out, the information again you see on your screen. From Orange Beach, Alabama and Mobile Bay, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.